Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. We have a special Bible study today, part seven on the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you see the invisible Holy Spirit, angels and demons, especially as described in the Gospel of John 20 and 21 and 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus' Name show. And every week we like to do a special Bible study where we don't report the news, but we go through the scriptures, especially this week we're continuing our series on the gift of discerning of spirits. How do some people have, and how does God give a supernatural ability to some people to see or to hear the invisible Holy Spirit? or to see angels, or to see demons. Well, this is described in the Bible, and we're gonna continue now in the Gospel of John. Open your Bibles with us to John chapter 20. If you haven't seen the first six parts of this series, you need to go to our YouTube channel and watch parts one through six, but this is the conclusion of our study in Johannine theology, and especially the Gospel of John chapters 20 and 21. Here's a picture I like to show of Uh, Peter and John, as they are rushing, picture uh, the morning of Christ's resurrection, Resurrection Sunday when Jesus rose from the dead, they're rushing to the empty tomb. What is this news that we've heard? And you can see John is the younger of those two. And John, actually they got there late. You know who was the first one to the tomb? Let's look at our first scripture here from John chapter 20. It wasn't Peter or John, it was Mary. Mary, arrives in verse 11, she's standing there at the sepulcher and she's weeping. And as she wept, she stoops down and looks into the tomb. And what does she see? Does she see the dead body of Jesus? No, the body's gone. She sees two angels in white, one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And here's a graphic representation. I love this artist, uh, Gustave Dore, a classic Christian artist who draws a picture of the angel at the empty tomb. And here maybe is Mary looking at the angel and what does he say? Uh, he, you know, Jesus is not here, he's risen. And how does she able to see the angels? Angels are hard to see. Well, obviously it was a special revelation given to her and the gift of discerning of spirits. But then she got the gift a second time when she was able to see Jesus. In verse 14, the Bible says this, When she said this, she turned herself back and now she didn't see the angels, now she saw Jesus standing, but she didn't know it was Jesus. She thought it was the gardener. So now she's having a conversation with this man, doesn't really know who he is, is not discerning his identity, and suddenly Jesus reveals himself. He says in verse 16, Mary. She turned herself and she says to him, Rabboni, master. Now it's like scales fall from her eyes and she sees the risen Christ standing before him, before her. Jesus, weren't you crucified? Just imagine the shock that came to her face when she discerned the spirit of the risen Christ, the person of Jesus, the resurrected Christ and discerned, hey, this isn't the gardener, it's really Jesus. And she looked deeper and saw his true identity. In John 20, Uh, verse 22, Jesus is now standing, the resurrected Christ is standing in front of the disciples. He says, receive the Holy Ghost. He breathes upon them. Well, this is what some people refer to as the first reception of the Holy Spirit. Different than in Acts chapter two, you see the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Here is where the disciples receive the Holy Spirit from Jesus as he breathes on them. Notice the symbology there, like, like wind coming from his breath and the word for Holy Ghost or pneuma is also used for wind very often. So notice with this reception of the Holy Ghost, they get some power here. In verse 23, if you uh, remit someone's sins, they're remitted. If you retain their sins, they're retained. This is why when I perform exorcism, when I am praying with someone who confesses their sins and they wanna get the devil out of their spirit, 
I, I very often pronounce to them, your sins are forgiven. And when their sins are forgiven, notice he's associating the reception of the Holy Spirit with the power to forgive sins. Did you know that you as a pastor, when someone comes to you and confesses their sins to you, you should be able to look them in the eyes and say, if they're sincere and you discern they have been forgiven, you should be able to say, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. That is the most healing and cleansing of all words, I think, that sometimes people need to hear when they're getting the devil removed from their heart. Here's a picture of the Apostle Thomas. I wanna encourage you uh, because he received the gift of discerning of spirits in verse 27. When the Bible says uh, Jesus is standing there with doubting Thomas, here's the classic picture. Reach hither your finger, behold my hands. Reach in, thrust your hand into my side and be not faithless, but believing. Then something deeper happened in Thomas's heart. He says, my Lord and my God. So notice the physical act of seeing Jesus' physical body now gives impetus or it gives you know, a reason, it gives something for Thomas to grasp hold on and with that comes faith. First he had the evidence, then he received the faith. And when he had the faith, then the scales fell from his eyes and he said, oh, my Lord and my God, you, you really are risen from the dead. But Jesus is saying, you need to consider the sequences the opposite way. Don't wait for the evidence before you believe, Thomas. You believe because you've seen me. It's better for those who have not seen me and yet have believed. So this is the chicken and the egg. Do you believe because you see, because you can discern the Holy Spirit? No, what we need to do is believe in the Holy Spirit before we can see him. And you know what happens then? If you believe first, then you'll see him also. But it's our, it's our job to believe, it's his job that God will reveal himself to us. As it says in uh, verse 18, here's another prophecy. Jesus had this special ability connecting discernment of Peter, discerning Peter's spirit with his prediction of the future. Notice how prophecy, when Peter says, uh, Jesus says to Peter, when you're old, you're gonna be bound, they're gonna take you where you don't wanna go. Jesus spoke this signifying what kind of death Peter should glorify God. You know, Peter's persecution when he was crucified upside down, that gave glory to God because it revealed the hidden spirit of Christ inside the person of Peter. Peter brought glory to God by revealing the Holy Spirit inside of himself through that sacrificial death. Let's take a break and when we come back, we're gonna talk about 1 John. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll free, at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. I wrote my PhD dissertation on the topic of discerning of spirits. And we're continuing our Bible study. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, we've been discussing the Gospel of John. We've just concluded that. Now we're gonna talk about the epistle of 1 John. Now, I had already mentioned in a previous show that in the Gospel of John, there are at least 40, maybe 50 or more examples of discerning of spirits. We've gone through those and now you know them. I'm gonna predict now that in 1 John, and maybe 2 John and 3 John, there's gonna be between 12 and 15 more examples of the spiritual gift of discerning spirits. This is a major theme of Johannine theology. And anyone who doesn't see it really needs to 
Go back and examine, watch the last few shows that we've done, and let's start in 1 John chapter one. It says in verse one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, the word of life. He's describing something, not just uh, that we touched Jesus, not just that we walked with him, but we saw something deeper inside of him. We saw the spirit of Christ upon the person of Jesus. And that which we heard, which we're trying to declare to you. Now it says in verse two, the life was manifested. In other words, there was something hidden and then it revealed itself, it manifest. Anytime you see the word manifest, it means they're discerning the spirit that is being revealed. We've seen it and we wanna show you that eternal life, which was manifest to us. Something hidden was revealed to them. Listen, a lot of people saw Jesus. He must have met you know, thousands of people in his lifetime but not all of them saw the spirit of Christ in him. It was the special gift that now they're declaring in verse three, which we have seen and heard and declare to you so that you may have fellowship with us. They're trying to declare or reveal this hidden glory. They want you to have the gift of discerning a spirit so that when you look at Jesus, you will see what they saw. You will look deeper into his soul and see the invisible Holy Spirit. When you can see the spirit of Christ and the person of Jesus, then you'll know, hey, he's the real deal. And then you'll have fellowship with us. In verse five, he continues, this is the message we've heard of him and we declare to you that God is light and in him there's no darkness. Notice the comparison here between light and darkness. Darkness is a, is a type and a symbol of sin, of the demonic. Light is a type and symbol of holiness, of the Holy Spirit. So when you, when you compare, and John is really gonna get into the morality of light and darkness. He starts this now in verse seven. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with another. And with the blood of Jesus, the son of God, cleanses us from all sin. Notice the connection here between walking in the light, in other words, obedience to his commands, and having your sins forgiven. Wait a minute, you mean you have to walk in the light in order for the blood of Jesus to forgive your sins? Yes, you actually have to do that. So the morality of walking in the light, the little bit of revelation that you have, the little bit of knowledge that you're given, when you discern spirits a little bit, you should walk in that, obey the, the teaching what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you. If you see the Holy Spirit, do what he tells you to do. If you hear the voice of God, obey what he told you to do. And when you do that, your sins are gonna be forgiven. The blood of Jesus will forgive your sins. In chapter two, he builds on this connection to keeping Christ's commands. It says in verse five, he who keeps his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Now picture this, when Jesus commands you to keep his commands, what's his first command? Love. So when you keep his commands, what's gonna be perfected inside of you? Love. You're gonna love your neighbor. When that love begins to manifest inside of you, did you know God is actually manifesting in you? And this is how we know that we are in him. We're able to see that God is in us, why? Because love is in us. You know God becomes visible? Wait a minute, I thought God was invisible. Nobody can see God. You can see God in the form of love. When love manifests in your heart, then you can see God in there. In verse eight, he continues this theme. The darkness is past and the true light now shines. What is he saying here? He is in the light and hates his brother is actually in darkness. Do you know if you say that you're in the light, but you're actually walking in moral hatred toward your brother, you're not full of love, you can claim that you're seeing, but you're not really seeing. Your eyes are blind, you're in the darkness. How can you claim to have the gift of discerning of spirits when you don't love your neighbor? How can you claim to know right and wrong oh, I'm pretty smart, I know right from wrong, I'm full of knowledge about right and wrong, but you're not doing right. You're not actually loving your neighbor. You know what? You don't know anything about right and wrong unless you're living an actual life of love. If you're walking in love, then you can claim to walk in the light. Then you can claim you know what you're seeing. In verse 10, he who loves his brother abides in the light. There's no stumbling in him. You do not have the ability to see the Holy Spirit until you love. Notice the connection here. When you love your brother, the light 
is manifest. The light is revealed and you don't stumble anymore. You don't get the gift of discerning of spirits until what? Until you love your neighbor. That's the best way to receive the gift. Here in verse 11, he who hates his brother is still in the darkness. He walks in the darkness, he doesn't know where he's going. Darkness has blinded his eyes. You are spiritually blind. You cannot see the Holy Spirit if you're walking in hatred. But if you walk in love, then you will see the Holy Spirit. That's the key to receiving that. Let's take a short break and we'll continue in chapter three. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16 year career and a million dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll free at 866-Obey-God and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. In verse one, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father stowed upon us that we could be called the sons of God and the world knows us not because it knew him not. So again, sinners who don't walk in love are not able to know God. They're not able to see God, but guess what? If you walk in love, you will be able to see God. Notice the connection between discernment and obedience. If you're filled with love, then your eyes will see. Everybody say that, if you're filled with love, then your eyes will see. That's how you receive the gift. In verse two, he continues this theme. Uh, he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, if you're like Jesus, if you love the way Jesus loved, then you're gonna see him as he really is. Your eyes are gonna be opened, you'll be able to discern the spirit of Christ and the person of Jesus. Continues that theme in verse eight. Notice the strong connection. This is the home run verse for all of our Johannine studies, verses eight and 10. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Did you know there's a connection between sin and evil spirits? Oh wait, I thought sin is a human choice. Yes, it is. But if you're walking in human sin voluntarily by an act of your own free will, the devil didn't make you do it. We're not blaming the devil, but you know what happens? you open up your heart and you allow the devil to rule that part of your morality. If you commit sin, you are ruled by the devil. You are demonized, you are possessed. Now, I'm not talking oppressed, oppression is when the devil's tempting you from the outside, sin is after you consent. Then the devil is ruling you from the inside and you need forgiveness of sins, you need an exorcism, you need to have the devil come out of you because it continues in verse 10, Here's how you know, oh no, some people say, I'm a child of God, I'm not really a child of the devil. Well, here's how you really know. In this, the children of God are revealed or manifest. You can see the children of God, you can see the Holy Spirit inside of them versus the children of the world or the ones who you can see the devil inside of them. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he is loved not his brother. If you do not love your neighbor, you're not full of the Holy Spirit, why? Because God is love. What if the Holy Spirit inside of you was manifesting in the form of love? Then I could see the Holy Spirit inside of you because you're actually loving your neighbor. Then you can claim to be a child of God, but if, if, the, if you're not walking in love, you can't claim to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you're walking in hatred, that's not the Holy Spirit inside of you, is it? You've gotta see and equate the concept of love with the identity of the Holy Spirit. If you're full of love, then you can see the Holy Spirit inside of you. Verse 24, he continues that theme. He who keeps his commands dwells in God and God dwells in him. Did you know if you don't obey Christ's command to love, then God doesn't dwell in you? 
but here's how we know he who abides in us by the spirit that he's given us. In other words, if you keep his commands, then you're full of love. That's how you know you have the Holy Spirit because you're full of love. In verse John four, he continues, very key and critical sequence, and we discussed this in a previous show, but it bears repeating. He's teaching you how to discern the spirits. Verse one, don't believe every spirit, but try the spirits. Test those voices that are whispering in your ear to see if they're really coming from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This is how you know the spirit of God. Verse two, every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. If you're hearing a voice and that voice is whispering to you and it's confessing not that Jesus has come in the flesh, Jesus wasn't a real person. Don't believe that. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. You can discern the identity of that invisible spirit. Oh, I can't see it, but those thoughts are coming into your mind. Where are they coming from? They're coming from the spirit of the Antichrist. In verse four, it says, you are of God, little children, you've overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is not just about Christians and non-Christians. Those are humans. It's about the spirits that are inside of them. Did you know the Holy Spirit inside of Christians is greater than the devil who is inside of non-Christians? That's what he's saying here. Look into their hearts and see what spirit is ruling them before you trust them. In verse six, he really hits this home. Why is it important that we agree with the Bible? because the people who wrote the Bible say, we are from God. And if you know God, you're gonna to listen to us because we wrote the Bible. This is how you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The biggest way to discern the spirits is to agree with the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit inside of the people who wrote the Bible should be the same Holy Spirit that's inside of us. And if the Holy Spirit is ruling me, I'm gonna recognize that same spirit inside of them. And if the devil is ruling me, then I'm gonna look at the Holy Spirit inside of them and say, oh, that's not God, I, that's not a good thing. I'm not gonna agree with the Bible. I disagree with the Bible. You know what, that's an evil spirit inside of you that is disagreeing with the authors of the Bible because they had the Holy Spirit. Well, what do you have? You got a different spirit, the spirit of error that disagrees with the Bible. That's how we know. Let's take a short break. We're gonna conclude with uh, 1 John 4. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll free at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. First John 4, we're gonna finish this rapidly now. Everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. If you don't love, you don't know God, for God is love. Notice the connection here between discerning the spirits and morality, doing what is right and loving God. If you don't love, you don't discern. If you do love, then you do discern. Why, because God is love? You mean the Holy Spirit is actually love? When I see love in my neighbor, I'm seeing the Holy Spirit inside of them? Yeah, that's what he's saying. But by the way, if you don't love, you're gonna be blind. You're not gonna be able to accurately discern. You might see there's three or four people over there. Some of them got spirits. I don't really know what the spirits are. It's because you don't have love in your own heart. If you really have love for God, you're gonna be able to see that's the devil, that's the Holy Spirit, that's an angel. You've got to love and then scales will fall from your eyes. Verse 12, it confirms this idea. You haven't seen God at any time. 
But if we love one another, then God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. So how do you see God? Nobody sees God, God is invisible. This is how you see God. You've gotta love one another and then God will live in you. If God lives in you, you'll be able to see him. This is how we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he's given us the spirit of love. That's how we know and we can see love. If you can, here in verse 16, it says, God is love, he who dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. If your heart is full of love, then you'll be able to see God in yourself. That's why we gotta self-examine, get rid of all the evil that's in us, get our hearts full of love and then we'll receive the Holy Spirit. Chapter five, verse 18, there's a connection here. Whoever's born of God does not sin, but Jesus keeps him, so the wicked one will not touch him. Notice the devil is now connected with sin. The wicked one won't touch you if you don't sin. When you do sin, what do I see? I discern the Holy Spirit inside of you or me or anyone who sins is ruled by the devil. There's always a connection. Second John, he confirms this. Whoever transgresses, in other words, who sins and doesn't abide or obey the teachings of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ, if you obey the teachings of God, then you have both the Father and the Son. Here in 3 John verse 11, he confirms that very theme. If you do good, you're from God. If you do evil, you've not seen God. Some people may say, oh, I discern the spirits. I can see angels, I can see demons. Not if you're doing evil. If your heart is, that's why we all need to self-examine. And let's pray as we close this show that God will give us the ability to examine our own hearts so that we can see the Holy Spirit. Let's pray, Father in heaven, we self-examine, we look into our own hearts at our own sins and we ask you to get them out of us. Get our demons out of us and replace them. Forgive our sins and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let us be ruled by the spirit of love. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of love, to rule our hearts, to fill us with obedience to Christ's command to love God and neighbor, and then our eyes will be opened in Jesus' name. God bless you, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.